Hi, welcome to Tarot Scopes for September 2023. I'm going to do like I do every single time we're going to pull a card of the year for in this case it's Virgo since it's Virgo season and then I'm going to go ahead and pull the Tarot Scope for the month for every zodiac sign in order starting from Virgo this month. So let's get started. Please be clear card of the year for Virgo. All right, we have the Six of Pentacles for Virgo. It's really interesting. As soon as I pulled that Six of Pentacles, I had a little bit of an aversion to that card for Virgos for the year because it's a card of generosity and it's a card of giving your gifts and your talents in a very generous way. And the reason why I had an aversion to that is because Virgos tend to give a lot and in, in an and in an imbalanced way that often makes them feel a little bit taken advantage of or like I have to do everything myself or for other people, no one's giving to me. So based on that aversion to the card, my advice for the card of the year for Virgos is to redefine that generous relationship this year. What does it mean to be truly generous and to do it because you're inspired to do it, not because it's a habit, not because it's an expectation, not because it's something that you've always done as a way to use your generosity as currency for love, affection, you know, etc. So my challenge to the Virgos that are listening to this this year is to only give when it generously, when it genuinely feels generous and to redefine what generosity is and make sure that you're not overgiving as some sort of currency for yourself, but to find it from a true place. Because when it is given from a true place, then it will actually circle back to you and fill your cup. So if you have felt depleted from your giving, it's because it's with contingencies, it's with these conditions, it's for a currency or for an outcome that you might not even be aware of. So only give when it feels in alignment and the way to check is, does this fill me up to give? Like, is it a gift to me to be able to give? All right, let's check out Virgos. Please be clear for this month of September. Wow, lots of water energy for our Virgos. This is great. This is great for Virgos. So we have the Page of Cups, the Ace of Cups, and the Strength card. So this is really oriented around your ability to open to receiving love and it's all about this month giving love receiving love and with the page of cups like doing it in a way that feels fun and playful like really play and dance with this sort of these aspects of yourself that are really giving and that light up the strength card is really relates back to that card of the year about giving because the strength card is someone that is not a pushover. It's someone that's very open hearted, very generous, very compassionate and empathetic, but also has that strong steely spine. So it's strength and vulnerability, strength and openness. And by the end of the month, it feels like you're going to really have that down. And the way that you get that down is with this playful energy of the heart and giving in little bits and ways um, of your heart and your energy in the beginning of the month. So you sort of practice and get to that level of self mastery. So I would ask yourself like how you like to love, how you like to receive love and practice that and express that to other people with that page of, of cups. Like this is an opportunity for you to say to your loved ones, this is how I feel love. This is how I receive love. Would you mind, you know, giving it to me in that way? It would, it's really beautiful. All right. I think we have next Libra. I just want to check. Oh my goodness, Libra, we have three major arcana cards for you. And we have a card that's associated with Libra. We start with the Justice card, we start with the Lovers card, and we start and then we um, then we have the Magician. These are three major arcana cards. So as you are leading up to your solar return, you've got a lot of big energies to work with here. So what I'm seeing here with I see the Justice card and the Lovers card. These are both cards of sort of duality and polarity. Um, the justice card is when you're mentally like weighing the pros and cons and trying to come up with a sense of balance regarding some decisions you're making. 
Now, I would say that you might be making decisions regarding your love life and partnerships and ways that you like to be in partnership in this phase of your life. So the step one is to really intellectualize it, to actually think about it, to to reflect about what you know about yourself. And then phase two is to then Take those notions that you've sort of intellectualized and feel them. When you imagine yourself in the fullest expression of positive relationships, how does that make you feel based on your pros and cons list or like whatever it is that you intellectualized? Do you feel harmony? Do you feel in in balance? Do you feel like you are in sync with yourself uh, when you imagine it that way? Now, the lover's card can talk about being in sync and in harmony with another person that you can see a long-term relationship with, but also it's the inside. It's it's balancing our own inner and outer. It's balancing our own masculine and feminine. So do you feel in harmony with yourself? And once you get very clear on how it is that you want to feel, especially regarding like either interpersonal relationships or inner relationships, with the magician card, you have all of the tools to apply it and make it real and make it manifest. So step one, clarify. Step two, feel it. And once you know that I'm making adjustments and once you know that's right, shoot that out to the universe because you will be received. You will be received. All right, next we'll go to Scorpio. Please be clear for Scorpio. All right, Scorpio. Ooh! <laughs> I have my personal scary card um, for the Scorpios. Okay, so you have the Three of Cups, we have the Seven of Wands, and then we have the Tower card. The Tower card is my personal scary card, and I have a video if you look back on my feed about how to read scary cards. But right now we're saying we've got to start the month with a, with a, a feeling of celebration, being social, bringing people into your life that, that are uplifting and that feels really good. It's also a time to sort of reflect on certain milestones that you've achieved and see if you can actually feel like in your heart the feeling of that success and that celebration, whether it's professional or personal relationships or even uh, personal development goals that you've been able to achieve. Really allow yourself to feel appreciative and celebration for all that you've achieved. Then it's showing like mid-month, we're going to start to have lots of energies coming at you and that you feel like you might be fielding them off or warding them off and kind of having to like be a ninja to make sure that you don't get taken out by outside influences energetically. Now, I will say it's showing with this tower card at the end of the month. This is usually a card of like a shakeup, like a big shakeups and things that come to, to bear. Um, and outside influences coming in in order to make some changes that you have been resistant to make. Now, sometimes that's scary because the tower card is a card to f where you're feeling a little bit out of control. Again, it's outside influences. But the lesson of the tower card is that no matter where you land, no matter what these shakeups sort of uh, disintegrate. It's for your own good. These could be outside um, things that happen, you know, like in your physical world, or this could also be a disintegration of ideas or a restructuring of, of habits, like an internal tower moment. Um, let me see what this is related to most generally for the Scorpio population. Um, it's showing here with the five of pentacles. This actually could be things that happen regarding um, finances, your physical body, your physical health, um, and things like that. So you're having a shakeup relating to either like finances and health or how it is that you relate to the more tangible uh, areas of your life. And that could mean like changing what you, your definition of success, changing uh, your what motivates you and gearing yourself more towards what inspires you. But it's really kind of like a come to Jesus around how you feel about, you know, like money and your physical reality. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right, Sagittarius. Okay, Sag. All right, so we have the Two of Cups, we have the Seven of Swords, and we have the Four of Wands. So what we're seeing here is you're going to be asked to evaluate some of these new kindred spirits that enter your life this month. So it feels like there's new friends, new connections, um, 
or your ability to connect with people one-on-one -on -one is going to be enhanced. And it shows here in the long term that these are some really great relationships to be built in the long run. But what's going to sneak up on you is the seven of swords energy of like, can I trust these new relationships? Is there is this trustworthy or am I waiting for the other shoe to drop? It's showing here that these relationships will actually pan out in a positive way. So this is an opportunity if you start to feel suspicious, if you start to feel like you can't trust yourself or others to really dig into like the internal lack of trust and the reasons why you might have quote unquote trust issues and see if you can work within yourself to resolve them. Look for like the positive evidence that people are good, that people are that they want to stick around, whatever your specific brand of lack of trust is. Try to find the opposite of that and evidence that it's not true because it is showing that these people can be trusted and that they should be invited into your life. And it's an opportunity for you to sort of see where you need a little bit of healing when it comes to trust and new relationships. All right, Capricorn. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is looking like a really good month for Capricorn. So we have the World card, we have the Nine of Cups, and we have the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands is, is mildly concerning, but not that bad. So what we're seeing here is like an end of a major cycle uh, where you can kind of reflect back on everything that you've done over a long period of time. So this isn't just the last month. Like you're going to maybe be reflecting over the past year, five, 10 years. And it feels like there's a cycle that's completing where you can look back at it and say, I did my best. And when I look at my life and where I am, I am grateful for every moment because it's created my experience today. And it, you'll feel really content if you take a very wide view of like where you've been and where you are right now. And it's showing that you can actually really easily sit back and feel this sense of achievement like I have made some of my wildest dreams come true and if you look at where you are today there's a version of you a year ago five ten years ago that would be so ecstatic to be in the seat where you're sitting now the only thing that needs to sort of maybe change is if you have achieved all that you've achieved in your lifetime feeling overwhelmed pushing the boulder up the hill by yourself um, really trying to like just wrangle the universe and like what you want to the ground, this is now time to start a new phase where you can create a life that you want and a life of achievement without having to go at it alone, without having to overwork, overwhelm, and really sort of push it. So this is a season for you to consider what it feels like to be more allowing, more receptive. I'm not saying don't do things because we know Capricorns like to do things, but get things done in a way that has more ease, more support, and that has more flow. All right, Aquarius. <laughs> wow. All right, Aquarius, we have the eight of wands we have the judgment card and then we have the queen of swords so things are going to be moving fast for you this month the eight of wands comes in when there's like quick changes quick insights sometimes it's a card that indicates some fun trips and travel but the energy is moving for you so you're not likely to feel very stagnant this month and the energy is moving to help you get in alignment with your sense of purpose and if you so if you felt like you've lost touch with your purpose or you're trying to uh, identify a new purpose for a different phase in life, you will get that clarity this month where you can sort of see how the efforts that you're putting forward today will have a long pasting, long impacting, I guess, impact <laughs> into the future. And once you get that that notion, like you feel it in your bones, like, okay, I have, a, I've reconnected with my sense of purpose. You're being asked to create a plan and a long-term vision for yourself um, that you can take far into the future. And if you use that plan or that sense of why, that sense of purpose as a filter to filter out all of your opportunities, all of your activities, et cetera, you will then be kept very closely on that path. So you're being asked to really focus and hone in on what you want um, from a deep level and what kind of impact you wanna make in this world and be unwavering in the pursuit of that purpose. That's no small thing. <laughs> All right, Pisces.
All right, Pisces, we've got this King of Wands, the Temperance card, and then the Six of Cups. So what we're seeing here is uh, this is a really spiritual month for you. When we see the King of Wands and also the Temperance card side by side, it's it's a month where you're really going to be advancing your spiritual practice, uh, moving forward in your passions, and feeling really grounded in who you are from a spiritual perspective. It's showing here that there's like a lot of healing that needs to be done or that has been done that's making you feel very secure in who you are and to feel really balanced. And it's showing here that there's been... It, so I feel like there's just, for half of you guys, it's like healing that needs to be done. And for half of you guys, it's healing that's already been done. So pick which one fits, suits you best. But it seems like a lot of the healing that's been done or needs to be done has to do with childhood relationships, how you felt as a kid, inner child work, that sort of thing. And um, being a inner father to those aspects of yourself. So you might have had to have some um, sort of pivotal moments or epiphanies related to you and how you relate to the father figures in your life and how you can heal and rebalance and restore that within yourself so that you can be your own inner father um, and give that sort of um, nurturance, discipline, support to yourself. All right, now we have Aries. We're so funny. I said Aries and then I have... Um, the emperor showing up on the bottom here of our deck so which is a card related to aries all right aries please be clear all right aries wow we have a lot of great energy for our aries friends so this is wonderful so we've got the nine of cups we have the lovers card and then we have the world card so right now you are really sitting in this feeling of contentment like you're probably looking around being like feeling like a badass that you have created um, a really emotionally stable place for yourself and a life that you love it's showing that uh, you are in complete harmony right now and you are feeling so balanced and like there's a give and take this month where you feel like we've pulled the lover's card before for somebody else like you feel the sense of harmony with within yourself but then also within the relationships in your life especially those long-term relationships like the work that you've done to like get right with those is going so great and I would just feel like this is a good month to sort of coast for you and just like bask in appreciation because it's showing all aspects of your life are feeling really good and positive and when you're feeling like that it's a great time to continue to amplify that feeling of comfort and success and harmony and positivity because what um it's it helps you to uh, sort of cultivate more of those sensations and experiences in the future. Good job, Aries. All right, Taurus. All right, Taurus. Okay, we've got um, some competing energies here. So we've got the uh, nine of swords we have the ace of pentacles and we have the queen of cups so you're going to start the month with a lot of anxiety it's saying like you might have at the tail end of last month some anxiety is kicked up and it feels like it carries over into this month um, it might be impacting your sleep it might be impacting the way that you can sort of uh, get mental rest like the anxiety might be sort of the undercurrent that help, that keeps you from feeling relaxed but it's showing here like the antidote to the anxiety is the ace of pentacles it's like bringing in something new likely regarding your work or your home life and even if that new thing doesn't manifest right now you should start to be thinking about a move or like a new house or a new job or a new project just starting to think about what can be different in the future should be enough to sort of quell that anxiety that you came in came in with this month so it's a great time to sort of brainstorm around some of those more tangible aspects of your life and start planting those new seeds um, it's also saying you're being charged with uh, embracing your queen of cups 
which is the intuitive side of you, which is the heart-centered feminine side of you that is very receptive and very go with the flow. And so if you tend to be rigid in your ideas, if you tend to be the type that needs to like work and push instead of open and receive, you're being asked to lean more into that receptive quality and nature that you do have within yourself because that will also ease the anxiety. So my goal for you is like, don't focus on the anxious feelings, focus on the potential and possibility of what you can build in the future that's new and different and to be in a more receptive state. You're not gonna solve this problem by pushing through. You're gonna solve this problem by being open and receptive and having sort of the universe present you with whatever might be next. All right, Gemini. All right, Gemini. So we've got a few things going on for you here. We have the Knight of Wands, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Five of Wands. So again, I feel like I've said this before for Geminis, but we need you to fearlessly pursue your passions this month. If there's any sort of idea or inspiration, it's time to put it to action. Um, I would really listen to what inspirations come through, or if you have a list or you've had inspirations in the past, it's time to activate them. It's showing you actually have the money to do it too. So if there's any sort of passion projects that require money or a career change or something like that, it's showing you have the nest egg to support it. Use those funds. It's, it's there to be used. It's not there just to be hoarded. So if you have any sort of financial support or like a or like a nest egg you can use to kind of pursue these passions, it's a good investment for you. Now, there's a part of you that feels like it's competitive out there. How will I make myself known? I'll have to push myself to the front of the line to get recognized um, with this pursuit. That's an old story. That is an old story. So I would start allowing yourself to understand the story that there's enough, there's enough for everyone. I have a special gift that needs to be presented into the world that only I can give. And because of that, you sort of are above any sort of sense of competition because there is no competition because you're in your own league. All right, Cancer. <laughs> All right, Cancer. So we've got some things going on here. We have the um, Four of Wands, we have the Three of Swords, and we have the King of Pentacles. So this month, it's showing that you lead into this month feeling really uplifted. It's almost like you're riding a high. Um, and I feel like it has to do with like, again, for whatever reason, a lot of these signs where it's like really leaning into um, celebrating where you've come from and, and, and really recognizing all that you've achieved. And you're going to be riding in on that energy this month. And then we see that there's like a little kink in the flow of the positive momentum where you get fearful again. And it's almost like, is this too good to be true? Like, is my heart going to be broken? Or you might see an event that happens from a lens of betrayal or, or something like that. Just because it feels that way doesn't mean that it's true. Now, it could be true for some of you. Maybe you do experience some sort of betrayal or heartbreak this month. But I'm I'm seeing it more like this is like a minor infraction that gets kind of blown out of proportion based on this King of Pentacles. So it could be someone in your life does something that gets interpreted as negative heartbreak betrayal. Now, if this person to this point has been trustworthy, has been stable, has been a rock for you, my advice here is to give them the benefit of the doubt. It seems like this is more like an old pattern resurfacing for you that is giving you that sense of tension. Um, and I would say in most cases of the people that are listening to this, that's going to be the case. But regardless, you're being asked to bring a sense of maturity, groundedness, um, sort of sort of, um, yeah, maturity and groundedness to the situation and not allow yourself to go down these rabbit holes that you may have before to blow things out of proportion. Be measured and be grounded in how it is that you will resolve these issues and you will have no problem resolving the issue. All right, Leo. <laughs> All right, Leos. So we have, um, this is really great. So we've got the Ace of Pentacles, the Moon card, 
and that chariot card. So what I'm seeing here is there are new seeds planted that are being ready to bloom. You have been given, you're being given some new opportunities to pursue. And here's the deal. These opportunities can move very swiftly and to just bring you straight over the finish line to success. Or these opportunities can sort of be overthought, bring up the fear, the limitation, and then it's sort of like a start, stop, start, stop energy to these manifestations that are trying to grow. So I would, if I were you, put all of your focus on what is going right, all of the focus on what's positive, the path of least resistance, and how you can start adding fuel to this fire of these seeds that have been planted, which are weird analogies, but you know what I'm saying? Like, um, start on, overly focusing on what's positive, the momentum, the path of least resistance, and detract your energy from anything that seems confusing, diluting these ideas that are making you have fears or insecurities come to the surface. So if you can imagine, like you literally have a garden and you have these seeds planted, you want to water the seeds and then the weeds that come up, you want them to wither away from lack of attention. That's exactly what's going on for you. You've got some real great potential here and you can either let the weeds choke it out or you can water it and fertilize it and within no time they will come to full blossom. So I've also noticed as I've been doing these readings, that was the last one, that I forgot to do the reading for the collective because I was so excited to jump into Virgo. So I'm just gonna take a beat before I wrap up and I'm going to do the reading for the collective, which usually I do first, but here we are, Mercury retrograde. Maybe I lost track of my communication. All right, so for the collective, let's be clear. Okay, the collective reading looks really good. We've got the Nine of Wands, we have the Sun card, one of my favorites, and we have the King of Cups. So what I'm seeing here for the collective is you might be tired, you might be you know, coming into this month not feeling necessarily fresh as a daisy. The advice here is to keep moving forward. This isn't actually a time to retreat or to take that rest. It's the time to just push a little bit more, fo little forward, a little bit more because you're coming to the end of the exhaustion and you're going to be infused with the energy of the sun, which is so much positivity, which is positive self expression, which is uh, relating to your identity in a very positive way. And so when we use this sun card as an archetype, it's just you being 100% you. And by being in that level of alignment and authenticity, you are unstoppable. You are connected to your source. You are able to create and attract everything that you want. And from this position of full confidence and full expression of yourself, you also lean into these King of Cups tendencies, which is emotional maturity, leadership, emotional depth, like really being able to connect through your life, connect to your life experiences through your beautiful heart. And then your heart is gonna be so activated this month and that's gonna feel so good. So we wanna keep adding more of positive emotional experiences to yourself. We wanna give your heart to others. We wanna um, protect, not protect your heart, we want to, um, what am I saying? integrate your heart and your emotions into your everyday life. And you're going to be walking around by the end of this month and everyone's going to be wondering how it is that you're doing so great, like what it is that you're doing that is making you so luminous and so magnetic and so open and attractive. So <laughs> that's the reading for the collective at the end. Better late than never. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Terrascopes. I hope this has been very useful to you and I look forward to talking with you again next month month. Thanks so much.